what is metabolic syndrome? It does go by other names. Syndrome X, insulin resistance syndrome, dysmetabolic syndrome, multiple metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, the combination of diabetes and obesity. The real question is, what does metabolic syndrome mean and what does it mean to you? Uh, to put it as plainly as I can, uh, metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions such as uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes, insulin resistance, hypertension, dyslipidemia, visceral obesity, and inflammation. If you uh, take these various conditions put them together and let them fester, let them go unchecked, undetected, uh, untreated over a, over a uh, time period, what you are doing is creating a disastrous um, future for yourself. Because the dangerous thing about this is they are so insidious. Uh, hypertension doesn't hurt. Insulin resistance doesn't hurt. Uh, pre-diabetes doesn't hurt. None of these things produce pain or symptoms that you can readily detect. Um, basically, unless you are going to the physician, getting regular checkups, being in tune to your body, um, being in tune with information such as this, you may have no clue that this is festering. But what's going on is, the bottom line is, you are in danger of developing some fatal illnesses. Um, you are cooking a biological time bomb. You are a metabolic time clock and it is ticking and sooner or later it will manifest in one of these diseases and it will almost be too late to really do anything about it. So let's look a little bit more closely at the, the components of metabolic syndrome. As I mentioned, the components that I will go into more detail on each one of these are high glucose, insulin resistance, metabolic uh, or abdominal obesity or visceral obesity, hypertension or high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, and inflammation. These are the primary six components that make up metabolic syndrome. This is how, what criteria uh, a healthcare provider would use to diagnose you with metabolic syndrome. But uh, once again, let me reiterate that the main take home point is you want to understand this. You want to be an informed healthcare consumer. You want to be an advocate. And more importantly, the most important component is these are lifestyle induced conditions and you can prevent these things with education and dedication to lifestyle modification. So let's talk about glucose levels. The glucose levels are measured by blood tests after we have digested our food and the nutrients are absorbed from our intestines into the bloodstream and the glucose is floating around in our bloodstream that is what we are measuring when we talk about the glucose levels the glucose is floating around in the bloodstream it has to combine with insulin to actually get inside of the cells to provide it the energy it needs to perform its functions uh, in a nutshell that is what glucose is and what we're measuring when we talk about your glucose levels. And according to the American Diabetes Association, a normal level of glucose is less than 100. If you have a level of 100 to 125, you are creeping into a dangerous area called prediabetes. And if you have a level of 126 or greater, or if you have a hemoglobin A1C, if you do that test and it comes out to be greater than 6.5, you uh, can that is a criteria to be diagnosed with diabetes. 
and like I said earlier, di uh, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, diabetes are all uh, major components of metabolic syndrome. The hemoglobin A1C, to back up just one moment, the hemoglobin A1C is a measure to really determine what your blood level is over a period of three to four months. Uh, it can give us a better picture of how our body is really metabolizing or processing the glucose as opposed to just going to have one blood test. Oftentimes, people try to be on their best behavior for one or two days and then go take their glucose test so that they won't basically be diagnosed with the truth. So the hemoglobin A1C is the answer to that. We cannot fool the hemoglobin A1C. And again, uh, it should be less than seven. So if it's greater than 6.5, that is criteria for being diagnosed with diabetes. So let's discuss insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a key component of being uh, diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. Insulin resistance, in a nutshell, is when the cells of the body are actually not responding to the insulin when it actually combines with the glucose in the bloodstream. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the function of insulin, among other things, its primary goal is to combine with the glucose in the bloodstream and allow it to actually enter into the individual cells of the body and it provides the glucose to fuel the cells so they can uh, execute their various functions. So being able to know what insulin resistance is and when you have it is important for your physician to diagnose you and for you to understand what's going on with your own body. It's very key that you be an informed consumer because as I said earlier, um, we will actually have more healing from education than prescription. Um, we will not medicate our way into health uh, in the new millennium. So, uh, just a little sidebar. So let, let's really define insulin resistance. Um, according to the National Cholesterol Education Program, insulin resistance is when you have a triglyceride level greater than 150 and an HDL or a healthy uh, cholesterol less than 40. So what we're saying is we have a high level of fats and a low level of uh, healthy cholesterol combined with a BMI, body mass index greater than 25, this is basically saying obesity, and if you have a blood glucose level of greater than 110. So if you have obesity in the presence of a high glucose level and your good cholesterol is low, and your triglycerides, your fat levels are high, these are the criteria used to uh, diagnose insulin resistance.